Latest. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, sorry. Uh, let me get stuff in the right order here. Um, Uh, this morning, you <coughs> will all have seen that we issued a statement on the attacks that happened yesterday in Damascus, and I can tell you that the Secretary General condemns the attack on diplomatic premises of the Islamic Republic of Iran in Damascus, as well as the reported casualties. He reaffirms that the principle of inviability of diplomatic and consular premises and personnel must be respected in all cases in accordance with international law. Mr. Guterres also reminds all parties to respect all of their obligations under international law, including international humanitarian law as applicable. The Secretary General also repeats his call on all concern to avoid attacks that could harm civilians and damage civilian infrastructure. He further calls on all concern to exercise the utmost restraint and avoid any further escalation. He cautions that any miscalculation could lead to a broader conflict in an already volatile region with devastating consequences for civilians who already are seeing unprecedented suffering in Syria, in Lebanon, the occupied Palestinian territory, and the broader Middle East. And this afternoon, uh, as you will have seen, the Security Council will hold a briefing on these developments. Um, at the request of the Council, Khaled Kiari, the Assistant Secretary General for um, Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, uh, will brief Council members, and we'll try to get you his remarks in advance. Staying in Syria, we are alarmed by the impact of recent hostilities on civilians in the northwest of the country during the month of Ramadan. Yesterday, shelling struck residential neighborhoods in, in uh, Sarmin, in Idlib, killing a seven-year-old girl and injuring nearly a dozen other people, including three women and three children. The shelling also damaged a school. On Sunday, a car bomb struck a popular market in Azaz in northern Aleppo, killing at least eight people, including children and a pregnant woman, and injuring many others. The deputy uh, regional coordinator for the Syrian crisis, David Carter, expressed his condolences to the families of those affected and underscored that civilians must never be a target. Since the start of the year, 11 people, including two girls, have been killed in hostilities in northwest Syria. Some 50 others have been injured, including 16 children. That's what local authorities are telling us. And I want to flag that this afternoon, the Secretary General will speak at the General Assembly session on human security. He will speak about his recent Ramadan solidarity visits to Egypt and Jordan and will reiterate the need for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza and the release of all hostages that are being held in Gaza. The Secretary General will also talk about the need to ensure human security in the face of threats like climate change and the global cost of living crisis. Turning to Gaza and the heartbreaking news from Deir al-Bala, um, yesterday I can tell you that the Secretary General extends his condolences to the staff of the World Central Kitchen following the killing of its staff members in Gaza who were on a humanitarian mission. The multiplicity of such events is the inevitable result of the way this war is currently being conducted. We reaffirm yet again the need for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Also, our senior humanitarian reconstruction coordinator for Gaza, Sigrid Kog, has just come out of Gaza. Yesterday, she met uh, with the World Central Kitchen team members who just hours later were tragically killed in an airstrike by Israeli forces. Ms. Kog is appalled by this attack and joins others in expressing her condolences to their families and loved ones. For his part, uh, the humanitarian um, uh, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffiths, described the aid workers of the World Central Kitchen as heroes. 
uh, killed while trying to feed starving people. There was also a statement uh, in a similar vein from Jamie McGoldrick, the, the resident coordinator and humanitarian coordinator for the occupied Palestinian territory. According to our humanitarian colleagues, at least 196 humanitarian workers have been killed since October in the occupied Palestinian territory, which is one of the world's most dangerous and difficult places to work as a humanitarian. Meanwhile, just to update you on the situation on Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza, the World Health Organization uh, said today that attempts to access, access Al-Shifa Hospital remain ongoing over the past two weeks. Five requests to evacuate patients and staff from the hospital were denied or delayed. Uh, the World Health Organization said Al-Shifa, once a cornerstone of Gaza's healthcare system, is now an empty shell. As we said repeatedly, attacks on healthcare and the militarization of hospitals in Gaza are unacceptable. Healthcare workers and facilities where they work must be protected so civilians can receive the life-caring need, uh, health they need. And moving back north to Lebanon, I think we've seen some uh, erroneous press reports which we need to correct. And I just want to state clearly that um, uh, the peacekeepers from the UN interim force in Lebanon, uh, UNIFIL, continue to carry out their mandated activities along the Blue Line, despite increased tensions and last weekend's incident in which three uh, UN military observers serving with the mission and one a national colleague who was a language assistant were wounded. Peacekeepers continue to patrol and use the mission's liaison and coordination mechanisms to, in their effort to de-escalate and reduce tensions within their area of operations. We reiterate the urgent need for all parties to cease hostile actions and return to the cessation of hostilities under the framework of Security Council Resolution 1701. Um, Humanitarian update from Haiti. We and our partners are continuing to provide emergency assistance to people impacted by the crisis in the uh, capital city, Port-au-Prince. Yesterday, the World Food Program supplied more than 30,000 hot meals to displaced people in the capital. That's the largest number of meals ever delivered by WFP in one day since the start of this current crisis. Uh, WFP also provided 79,000 school meals to students in the Gonaive area in the north of Haiti and cash transfers to about 1,200 people in Jérémy, which is in the south of Haiti. The ongoing violence in Port-au-Prince is also impacting people outside of the capital as air transportation and maritime services, which are key to transport uh, goods across Haiti are heavily impacted. But we have some good news over the weekend. WFP and its partners were able to charter a vessel uh, that sailed from Port-au-Prince to Gonaive. The shipment contained medicines and medical supplies for more than 100 health partners in the northern region and food to replenish dozens of distribution centers in the Northwest Department, including in schools and in hospitals. Meanwhile, the continuing insecurity in the Port-au-Prince area also is, is pushing people to leave the capital and find refuge in neighboring areas. The International Organization for Migration tells us that between the 8th and the 27th of March, more than 53,000 men, women, and children left Port-au-Prince. The majority of them are heading towards the Grand Sud departments. Our humanitarian colleagues emphasize that these departments do not have the sufficient infrastructure and host communities do not have sufficient resources to cope with large number of people fleeing Port-au-Prince. And turning to South Sudan, our peacekeeping colleagues there tell us that the recently established temporary base in Mapper in Lake State is now fully operational and peacekeepers are regularly patrolling across Rumbek North Country. Uh, North County, excuse me. The UN mission also notes that this is, a cr this is critical given a spike in cross-border communal tensions since last year between the Lakes, between Lakes Lakes, excuse me, and Warp states. As a reminder, the temporary base aims to boost uh, our capacity to protect civilians, to facilitate also the safe delivery of humanitarian aid and create a secure environment to help address the root causes of long-standing grievances along bordering communities. 
the UN Mission Force Commander uh, Mohan Subram Subramian recently visited the temporary base where he met with state and county authorities, South Sudanese uniformed personnel, as well as peacekeepers who are currently stationed in that temporary operating base. He stressed that the mission is committed to protecting civilians and noted the need to collective efforts to address the root causes of conflict between neighboring states, particularly as South Sudan approaches election dates. Moving on to Ukraine, our colleagues from the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tell us that hostilities and attacks on critical infrastructure continue. Aid workers are providing support to people across the country, including in frontline areas. Today, we, along with our partners, delivered clean water, sanitation, and hygiene kits uh, to the Kurakov town in the Donetsk region, that's in eastern Ukraine. Local partners will distribute the supplies from this interagency convoy to hundreds of families impacted by war. You, the, we are determined to continue enhancing the capacity of local aid organizations. Last year, the Ukraine Humanitarian Fund allocated more than $180 million to about 50 different organizations in Ukraine. These grants ensure that aid workers were able to provide life-saving assistance to some 3.2 million people, including women and girls and people with disabilities. A couple of senior personnel appointments, then I will take your questions. Uh, today, the Secretary General, uh, following consultations with the Bureau of the Conference of the Parties on the Convention of Biological Diversity, uh, is appointing Astrid Schumacher of Germany as the Executive Secretary of the Secretariat of the Convention on Biolog Biological Diversity. The Secretary General extends his appreciation and gratitude to David Cooper of the UK, who will continue to serve as acting Executive Secretary until Ms. Schumacher assumes her functions. Ms. Schumacher brings to the position extensive experience in international relations and negotiations. Since 2017, uh, she has successively, successively been Director of Global um, Sustainable Development and for Green Diplomacy and Multilateralism in the European Commission's Environment Department. Uh, there's more online. And another appointment, uh, Secretary General appointed today, Ana Pedro Lopez of Spain as Acting Special Advisor and Head of the UN Investigative Team to Promote Accountability for Crimes committed by uh, Daesh, otherwise known as UNITAD. Uh, Ms. Pero Lupis will succeed Christian Richer of Germany, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his service. Ms. Lupis will lead UNITAD during the final stages of its mandate until its closure in 2024. Uh, she brings more than 20 years of experience in the required field. Edi, then Gabriel. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, first, um, on the attack on the um, Iranian consulate in Syria, um, the Secretary General issued a statement today calling for restraint and de-escalation. Iran has promised a response. Is the Secretary General uh, making calls to leaders in the region to try and keep this incident from exploding into a regional? Yes, the, the Secretary General received a phone call this morning uh, from the Foreign Minister of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And I think, uh, as you know, the, the Secretary General tends to say the same thing publicly as he does privately. We will remain in touch with all uh, other parties through different uh, channels. We are very concerned at about a, a potential uh, major uh, escalation beyond the escalations that we're already seeing. Gabriel. Thank you, Steph. Do you have any more details about uh, Ms. Cog's visit to Gaza? I mean, it was part of her, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's her third visit uh, to Gaza. It's part of the implementation of her mandate. She is the senior coordinator for humanitarian and reconstruction for Gaza. So it's only normal uh, that she uh, goes there on a regular uh, on a regular basis. And I heard you correctly when you said she met with some of the yep. victims. That's correct. Just mm -hmm. hours before they were killed. Do you know where, by any chance? Oh, she stayed mostly in the, in the Rafa area. Okay, so yep. just hours before they were killed uh, yep. by the Israeli airstrikes. They, That's correct. She met with them as That's part correct. of her some duties. Of, yes, part of the. I mean, speaking part. Sure. I mean, you know, the World Central Kitchen is yeah. is a partner of WFPs. It's also, as we know, very much involved in the maritime. Uh, in the maritime corridor. And after this, uh, after this incident, how is the UN adjusting aid delivery given that 
or reassessing uh, humanitarian aid well, given this we, incident? We, you know, um, as I've said, we, we've had more than, uh, I think, 180 humanitarian aid workers uh, killed in, in Gaza. Um, we have a deconfliction uh, mechanism, which clearly, I mean, for our part, we've, we have noted that it was not working uh, properly. Um, we keep delivering aid, as we said, on an opportunistic basis, which is not, no way to run a major aid operation. Uh, and this is why the Secretary General and all of us, uh, all of the senior leaders of the UN continue to push for a humanitarian ceasefire so we can deliver aid in safety, not only for, for our own colleagues, but especially for those who's, who are meant to receive the aid. And do you feel any more urgency? Do you, do you feel that UN humanitarians that are working and risking their lives are at more risk now, given the fact that World Central Kitchen employees were killed in a vehicle that clearly identified who they were working for, and two of the vehicles were in on a road that was a human supposed to be a humanitarian Listen, safe road? It is. The, the, the risks to humanitarian workers uh, have been there for months. This is just a very clear and illustrative uh, example of the challenges, the deadly challenges that humanitarian workers face every day in Gaza, be, be they internationals or, as most of them are, Palestinians. Deji and then Stefano. Steph, bear with me. Several questions still on the topic of the World Central Kitchen workers attack. Um, the Secretary General extends his condolences to those staff. Uh, obviously, Israel has already recognized it as an uh, unintentional uh, strike. What, what does the Secretary General have to say to the Israeli government on this incident? The message is let humanitarian workers do their job, right? Uh, they need to be able to do it in safety. We've seen the statements come out of Israel saying that they, be a, there's an investigation going on. It will be made public. Uh, we very much look forward to that. Uh, but we also remember that a uh, number of our colleagues have also been killed uh, in strikes on, on UNRWA um, premises, on locations that were deconflicted. So there was UNRWA, UNDP, uh, IOM, World Food Program. Um, they were also in places that were clearly uh, deconflicted. Exactly. That's what, what, I, what I want to ask you. How do you feel that this time, because this is World Kitchen Center, uh, World Central Kitchen uh, operation, so that Israel said it's it recognized it as unintentional attack. But UNRWA, for the, that, those more than 150 staff, there's still no rec even no recognition from the Israeli part that they did these attacks. I think it's a very interesting contrast. Uh, Stefano. Well, in part was this question, but I tried to change it a I'm little bit. I'm sure you can find a different question, yes, Stefano. Exactly. I trust you. Yes. And your question and, uh, creating abilities. No, it's a follow up on this because I, I see the reaction around uh, uh, several uh, European capital about this, this accident, or intentional or not intentional, in Gaza. And uh, words coming shocking and so on. Uh, and only in Europe, also here in, um, in the United States. Uh, because like you say just now, this is happening every day, it was happening, the humanitarian were, were dying. So um, does the Secretary General think that this is not fair, that when an European or US uh, humanitarian dies, then it makes more, you know, he's more shocking than when instead he's a Palestinian or somebody else? Well, I, I mean, I'll throw it back to you. Uh, I think a lot of the responsibility is that whose deaths get covered is done by the media themselves and by journalists. Who gets, who gets the headlines? Um, we, we are saddened by every civilian death that we have seen in this conflict starting by the, the terror that happened on the 7th of October in Israel, the kidnappings of Israelis, the, the killings of thousands and thousands and thousands of civilians in, in Gaza. 
every human being deserves to be respected and treated uh, the same. Uh, I'm going to go to Abdel Hamid and Michelle online, then I'll come back to the room. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I uh, followed this uh, statement by McGoldrick, uh, Miskag, Lazzarini, and Griffiths about the killing of the humanitarian workers for they belong to the world's central kitchen. I have two questions on the issue. First, the world central kitchen decided to withdraw from Gaza. Does that sound the alarm that the attack was intentional to make this group reach that decision to withdraw from Gaza? I, that's an analysis I leave to you. I, I, I can't speak to the motivation of people who have their fingers on the trigger. And World Central, oh. Kitchen, World Central Kitchen took the decision that it did. I, I didn't hear that they'd chosen to withdraw. I'd heard that there was a suspension of their activities. But you need to ask, I mean, your question can best be answered by the Israeli authorities and World Central Kitchen. Okay, my second question. In the fourth statement issued, the word condemned was missing. They, they all expressed uh, their sadness and paid condolences to the families of the people. But uh, the first, there was no calling for investigation the way Germany, for example, called for investigation. Why the UN did not call for investigation? And second, why the word, the key word, the golden word, he uh, condemned was missing from all four statements. Look, I will let you analyze and take apart our statements. Uh, it is clear that we condemn all uh, killings of humanitarian uh, workers. Um, and your, uh, sorry, and your f first part of your question, because I have short term uh, memories. About the investigation. Well, the, I mean, uh, Abdel Hamid, I, I think. Um, you know, we very often call for independent investigations, and of course, we want to see one in this case. Uh, but let's also be realistic. We're in the midst of a, of a conflict. Um, it would be hard uh, to do one now. It doesn't mean one shouldn't be done. But most importantly, it is incumbent of those who are responsible for this to be held to account. Uh, Michelle. Thanks, Steph. I just wanted to follow up on um, something you mentioned in the statement about World Central Kitchen, uh, where you said such events are the inevitable result of the way this war is being conducted. Can you flesh that out for us a little bit? What do you mean? And I think in, 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 in many ways it's a disregard for international humanitarian law uh, and a disregard to for the protection of, uh, of humanitarian workers. And I think the number of humanitarian workers uh, that have been killed, I think, is a testament uh, to that point. And is that directed at both parties, one party? Could you spell that out? I think out it's first? directed uh, at uh, all of them, all of people who are involved in this conflict. Uh, Deji then. Well, let's go to Dennis first, because he hasn't asked. Hi, Steph. Uh, so earlier today, UAVs with NATO equipment attacked facilities in Tatarstan. Uh, certain people were potentially injured, uh, including Tamanis. Do you have any comment on that? I mean, we, we stand against and call uh, for a halt to all attacks on civilian infrastructure. Uh, uh, Deji? Okay, a uh, quick question. Do you think this incident of World Central Kitchen, do you think this is an act against the Security Council resolution, which asks for Ramadan ceasefire? Well, has there been a ceasefire since the resolution? I'm just asking, I mean, you, you can observe as well as I can, so, Deji. Yeah, I mean, right. so, so I mean, it, I think so the question is self answered. Yeah, okay. So basically, we talk about the binding, non binding stuff. It seems like in reality that the resolution is not binding. In reality, it doesn't look like this resolution is being implemented. Mm. As to the binding and non binding, I think we've had an exhaustive yeah, discussion on that. And okay. I'm 
Farhan is, is, is the, as, as in many things in my life, is the ultimate authority. So Hamas, Hamas uh, accusing Israel conducted terrorism attack. What, 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 that, what does, what does the, the Secretary General I, I, I'm not going to comment on every comment made by other parties to this conflict. We want to see an end to this conflict. We want to see a humanitarian ceasefire. We want to see the suffering of the civilians in Gaza end. We want to see the hostages uh, released. Our message is sadly consistent at this point. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Follow me on this. I, I'm uh, going to follow you, but not for a long <laughs> and winding road, Stefano. Well, so no, make a, it a short, ch a a, short job. It's a serious one. This is, uh, well, Guterres last December invoked uh, Article 99 uh, for uh, the UN Charter about the situation in Gaza, and the Security Council addressed it. Now, I remember one of the first acts of uh, Guterres when he became Secretary General was to invoke the responsibility to protect in Myanmar the population that was basically uh, slaughtered and there was a uh, um, genocide that he was, he was invoking genocide and so on. Uh, it did work because the Security Council acted and say, they save about 600,000 people. Now, isn't it a situation in Gaza now starting to look very resembling? People escaping from one side to another, easing all in one place, they cannot move. There are even more than 1,200,000, I think. Shouldn't the Secretary General asking the Security Council to act on the responsibility to protect from genocide I, 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 the Palestinians. I, I think, Stefano, uh, to put on the shoulders of the Secretary General the fact that there's not been an end to this conflict would be the wrong conclusion. Thank you. Oh, good grace. Gabriel and Edie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank sandwich. you, Steph. Um, uh, Reportedly, the, the UAE is suspending its involvement in the humanitarian yep. corridor. Reportedly, mm -hmm. World Central Kitchen yep. has suspended their activities uh, for obvious reasons. Can you just talk about the ramifications of the incident for the UN's role in distributing aid? Well, I mean, it's a ramification not so much for the UN's role, the ramification for those civilians who depend on aid, whether that aid comes from the UN, whether it comes from the Maritime Corridor from World Central Kitchen or others, it's making the situation worse. Edith. Um, on, on some more positive notes, does the <laughs> Secretary General have any comment on the inauguration of Senegal's youngest president after some turmoil ahead of the election? We very much welcome uh, President Fai's inauguration. I think it is also a testament uh, to the Senegalese people uh, that uh, they fought for their right to vote uh, and that the institutions in uh, Senegal enabled uh, people to express their uh, will through uh, the ballot box. And, and another first. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment on Congo's selection of its first female prime minister? Uh, we very much welcome uh, this appointment. Uh, it is a historic moment for the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And uh, we wish the new prime minister all the best in trying to bring peace and prosperity to her country. On that end, on that note, I shall leave. Thank you, no Monica, today. Um, and also, I hope you...